keep our hair from it. in Stockbridge. It's a good day to come down today because they've got um, the Women's Institute doing all the coffees and everything which is good because there's lots of people coming in and out, lots of noise, lorries coming down. It's a little bit overcast today so we've just put a rug on her while she's standing here so she doesn't get cold. bothered by that flapping about on her back. Right, what we've done, I'm concerned about this mare clearing behind, right? Now, the, the problem is she's brushing her coronet, and that's a bad thing. So what we've done last night, or lately, late yesterday afternoon, was take her back to the forge and have her reshot again. Now, you get a case like this very rarely where it all goes like this behind. Now this could alter when she gets older. The farrier has done this time, he's put some trailers on the outside of the shoe obviously. You've got to keep back because the back of the carriage doesn't allow you to film it. But if we're back here you can see she's clearing now and I think, I think there's a possibility she'll be alright. If not she'd have to have a three quarter shoe fitted for now. But it would be my suggestion to put, um, what I call them, a uh, overreach boot on loft. Yeah, like what she's got on now. Yeah, mm. but fit it onto the back, so that's just something that goes right round. Leave it fairly loose and it can roll round. The problem, we've only put, the only reason we put it, we drove her down a little way and Mel's put some marks on the boot, some chalk on there so we can see if she's brushing the boot and where she's brushing etc. But sometimes this happens with horse, you know, you can be a, if she's three year old mare, oh yeah, she's a young mare, I think she's three year old, this, um, it can happen and it can grow out of it, you know, as their bone structure changes, they can grow out of it as they get more muscle and like that. But you can, you can see that she clears behind quite nicely if we just hang back here a bit you can see that the, the, the shoes are not banging together she's not as wide but she could become wider without any problem at all she could become a lot wider than she is at the present time you know just with growing up just with age so that's why we took her back and we put the trailing shoes on her because she'd have sent herself lame if she'd have been continued to be driven like that. So when you see there she's clearing quite nicely behind bearing in mind she's wearing an overreach boot on the back because the overreach boot's about the best thing you can use 
to, what's it, one, it does two things. One, it sits out about half an inch more than the actual natural position of the foot. So in that half an inch, as we chalk it, and then as we, you see where the chalk's worn away, you can gauge how much, you know, if we take the boot off, is it gonna clear? The trouble is when you've got a scab on a brush mark, I mean, just in turning a little bit tight um, or backing up or doing anything at all, doing anything at all, the, um, the scab can get knocked off and you don't get a true reading, you know. So what you do need to do is to let the wound heal, it's only very slight, but let it heal, let it scab up, let it dry. Drive the horse in, the natural feather will start to grow back down the inside and at that point then you'll know whether she brushes or not. But these shoes seem to be doing the job to me. I think if we even, the other thing is as well, which is a, a nuisance, is you, you want to protect the foot so you put on the boot, the boot makes the, the thing sweat and releases the you know, loosens the scab off, makes the scab wet. So it's like a catch-22 situation, but she's ready to go home, this mare. And she's only just started um, doing this. So we'll just have to wait and see. That's why we've changed the shoes. and put a trailer on the outside, so i.e. the shoe on the outside is much longer and turned out slightly, so that as she plants her foot on the thing, it keeps her feet apart slightly behind, just helps a little bit. Thatcher to show you what this mare's like we're being harnessed up and put to um, and obviously when she came she wouldn't tie up she was brought up here by a transport company and she broke the rope while she was in the lorry um, you know you tied her up anywhere she'd just pull straight back and snap the rope not because she was frightened of anything she'd do it while she was standing still with her leg at rest you know she fling herself backwards, pull with all her might against the rope, break it, and then as soon as she'd broken it, she'd just stand still. Um, you know, she'd squeal while she did it, like in, in temper, you know, just, I don't want to be tied up. Do not tie me up. Um, so obviously she's a lot better now. So by that, if you look, we've got her on chains. I mean, the only reason we're using a chain with her, if she pulled back, she'd snap the head collar, obviously, but the reason we're using a chain is because they chew the lead ropes um, and obviously being outside as well they fray so we're forever replacing them so if they have chains at least it means you know you don't get the danger of them untying it and letting themselves off um, but you can see the chain slack so she's not putting any pressure on it she's not getting ready to pull backwards at all now we took her down to the forge um, she's already been shod once while she was here. We had to take her back down the forge again yesterday evening um, to have her reshod because she's brushing behind, but she's not brushing on her fetlock, she's brushing on her uh, coronet band, which obviously, you know, with any sort of wound you get, you run the risk of infection if you don't keep it clean. But in this instance, she, she could make herself badly lame as well. So um, we've just had the shoes redone. 
she's got a little scab there on the inside and obviously she's knocked some of the feather off but you know that's a minor thing she's got a rubber bit in her mouth to one of our soft flexible rubber bits And, you know, she's not got a groom standing by her head to hold her still. Fletcher's doing this all by himself. And the other thing is as well, it's nice to know that she will stand still without needing someone at her head. You know, she's not making any attempt to walk on. You don't have to stand there feeding her tit bits to try and get her to stand while you're putting the harness on. You know, she'll stand there and wait, wait for you to do everything up, which is how it should be. And you can see as well, she's not making any attempt to pull back either. And with this mare, that was definitely a, a big issue because really, if you've got a horse that won't tie up, you know, it's uh, renders them virtually useless, and you know, you you can't do anything with them if they if they do things like that. But as you can see, everything we've done with her now, from leading her out the stable, tying her on the wall, harnessing her up, putting the vehicle on. She's as good as gold. So Fletcher's just going to go up and open the gate now. So again, she stood perfectly still. There's nobody at her head. She's not, to she's not attempted to follow Fletcher either when he's moved off. She can hear the gate opening. Obviously, she knows what that means. The gate opens every time she goes out the yard, so she knows she's in the vehicle. She's going off, ready to go on a drive. But she's not pouring the ground. She's not fidgeting. And that's exactly what you want. And Fletcher's just taken her for a canter on the grass, just to show that you know she won't take off in a wide open space or get excited on a different surface. Just brought her back, turning her around. Got loads of midges around today.
Yep. So Pick just them up again now. Get them right up where they should be on the hooks. Bring that right forward, that's it. Now bring it up. Up or out, up or out, up or out. Now drop them. Just to show you there, if you did make a mistake and drop the shelves, she's not going to bother. So the reason why we've just done that, I mean obviously it's not the uh, done thing to do that with a horse, but the purpose of doing it here is to show you that if you do make a mistake, and everybody does, you know, you're pulling your vehicle up to your horse and you trip, um, drop it, you know, or anything like that, you know, your communication with your groom isn't good and you think they've put it in the tug and they haven't and you let go and it, for whatever reason, falls on the ground. So rather than worrying about, you know, doing it all perfectly because you can't ever say that you're not going to make a mistake or that something like that wouldn't happen, we think it's better to train the horses to cope with it. So if you do make a mistake, at least they're not going to panic. Whereas if they've never experienced it before, then what you end up with is a horse jumping sideways, kicking out maybe, catching its leg on the shaft, and then before you know it, you've got a panicked horse, and possibly an injured horse, um, and it might possibly injure, injure you as well. Whereas all for the sake of, you know, a little bit of correct training, you can eliminate that problem, because the horse will stand still and not panic. So we drop them right on the ground. She's not worried about the noise or about the bang or about... Um, having it brush around her feet as it's sliding backwards so all in all she's a a lovely mare and she's only three years old so it can be done with young horses you can teach them to be safe and confident you know there's not many three-year-old newly broken horses I mean she's been with us now for six weeks so she's ready to go home She's been down in the traffic, only being driven in a piece of rubber. She's in single, she'll go out, she'll walk, she'll trot, she'll canter. You know, there's not, not many young horses that, you know, without meaning to sound big headed about it, there's not many young horses that would do it, but that's how we train them. We, we think it's better that they're like that, even from a young age. You know, just because a horse is young doesn't mean it should be given an excuse to spook at everything or not be safe on the roads or oh you know you can't do this with it because it's only a baby you know she's only a baby but she's behaving you know in our opinion just as well as a horse that's been driving for for 10 years you know